4. Heat. In chapter 3, you learned that woolen clothes are made from animal fibers. You also know that curtain clothes are made from plant fibers. We wear woolen clothes during winters when it is cold outside. Woolen clothes keep us warm. We prefer to wear light colored cotton clothes when it is hot. This gives us a feeling of coolness. You might have wondered why particular types of clothes are suitable for a particular session. In winter, you feel cold inside the house. If you come out in the sun, you feel warm. In summer, you feel hot even inside the house. How do we know whether an object is, is hot or cold? How do we find out how hot or cold an object is? In this chapter, we shall try to seek answers to some of these questions. 4.1 Hot and Cold In our day-to-day -day life, we come across a number of objects. Some of them are hot, table, hot and cold objects, object, cold or cool, warm or hot, ice cream, a spoon in a teacup, fruit juice, handle of a frying pan, do this and comment this. And some of them are cold. Tea is hot and ice is cold. List some objects you use commonly in table. Mark these objects as hot or cold. Do not touch objects which are too hot. Be careful while handling a candle, flame or a stove. We see that some objects are cold while some are hot. You also know that some objects are hotter than others while some are colder than others. How do we decide which object is hotter than the other? We often do it by touching the objects. But is our sense of touch reliable? Let us find out. Activity 4.1 Do this. Take three small tubs or containers, label them as A, B and C. Put cold water in container A and hot water in container. Make sure that water is not so hot that we, you burn your hand. A, B, C. Figure. Filling water in three containers. B. Mix some cold and hot water in container C. Now dip your left hand in container and the right hand in container B. After keeping the hands in the con two container for 2 to 3 minutes, put both the hands simultaneously in container C. Figure. Do both the hands get the same feeling? Bojo says, My left hand tells me that the water is muxy is hot. And the right hand tells me that the same water is cold. What should I conclude? Bojo's confusion shows that we cannot always rally on our sense of touch to decide whether an object is hot or cold. Sometimes it may deceive us. Then how do we find out how hot an object really is? A reliable measure of the hotness of an object is its temperature. Temperature is measured by a device called thermometer. 4.2 Measuring Temperature Have you seen a thermometer? Recall that when you or someone else in your family and had fever, the temperature was measured by a thermometer. The thermometer that measures our body temperature is called a clinical thermometer. Hold the thermometer in figure a clinical thermometer. Your hand and examine it carefully. If you do not have a thermometer, request a friend to share it with you. A clinical thermometer looks like the one shown in figure. A clinical thermometer consists of a long, narrow, uniform glass tube. It has a bulb at one end. This bulb contains mercury. Outside the bulb, a small shining thread of mercury can be seen. If you do not see the mercury thread, rotate the thermometer a bit till you see it. You will also find a scale on the thermometer. The scale we use is the Celsius scale, indicated by degree Celsius. 
Bojo wondered which of the two scales shown in figure he should read. Pahli told him that India has adopted the Celsius scale and we should read that scale. The other scale with the range 94 to 108 degrees is the Fahrenheit scale, degree Fahrenheit. It was in use earlier. A clinical thermometer's read temperature from 35 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius. Activity 4.2 Do this. Reading a thermometer. Let us learn how to read a thermometer. First, note the temperature difference indicated between the two bigger marks. Also, note down the number of divisions. Precaution to be observed while using a clinical thermometer. Thermometer should be washed before and after use, preferably with an antiseptic solution. Ensure that before use the mercury level in below 35 degrees C. Read the thermometer keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight. See figure. Handle the thermometer with care. If it hits against some hard object, it can break. Don't hold the thermometer by the bulb while reading it. Shown by smaller marks. Between these marks, suppose the bigger marks read 1 degree and there are 5 revisions between them. Then one small division can read 1 by 5 equal to 0 0.2 degree Celsius. Wash the thermometer preferably with an antiseptic solution. Hold it firmly and give it a few jerks. The jerks will bring the level of mercury down. And see that it falls below 35 degrees Celsius. Now place the bulb of the thermometer. Figure correct method of reading a clinical thermometer. Under your tongue, after one minute, take the thermometer out and note the reading. This is your body temperature. The temperature should always be stated with its unit degree Celsius. What did you record as your body temperature? The normal temperature of human body is 37 degrees Celsius. Note that the temperature is stated with its unit. Pahali measured her body temperature. She got over it as it was not exactly 37 degrees Celsius. Let us try to assure Pahali that there is nothing wrong with her. Activity 4.3 Do this. Measure the body temperature of some of your friends at least 10 with a table. Body temperature of some persons. Name, temperature, degree Celsius. Do this and comment this. Clinical thermometer record your observation as in table. In the body temperature of every person, 37 degree Celsius. The temperature of every person may not be 37 degree Celsius. It could be slightly higher or slightly lower. Actually, what we call normal temperature is the average body temperature of a large number of healthy persons. The clinical thermometer is designed to measure the temperature of human body only. The temperature of human body normally does not go below 35 degrees C or above 42 degrees C. That is the reason that this thermometer has a range 35 degrees C to 42 degrees C. Bojo got a naughty idea. He wanted to measure the temperature of hot milk using a clinical thermometer. Pahali stopped him from doing so. Caution. Do not use a clinical thermometer for measuring the temperature of any objects other than the human body. Also avoid keeping the thermometer in the sun or near a flame. It may break. 4.3 Laboratory Thermometer how do we measure the temperature of other objects? For this purpose, there are other thermometers. One such thermometer is known as the laboratory thermometers. The teacher will show you different types of thermometers are used for different purposes. The maximum and minimum temperatures of the previous day reported in weather reports are measured by a thermometer called the maximum minimum thermometer. This thermometer. Look at it carefully and note the highest and the lowest temperature it can measure. The range of a laboratory thermometer is generally from 10 degrees C to 110 degrees C. Figure. Also as you did in the course of the clinical thermometer, find out how much a small division on this thermometer rates. 
you would need this information to read the thermometer correctly. Let us now learn how this thermometer is used. Activity 4.4 Do this. Take some tap water in a beaker or a mug. Dip the thermometer in water so that the valve is immersed in water but does not touch the bottom or the sides of the container. Hold the thermometer vertically figure. Observe the movement of mercury in the thermometer. Wait till the mercury thread becomes steady. Figure. Laboratory thermometer. In addition to the precaution to be taken while reading a clinical thermometer, the laboratory thermometer should be kept upright, not tilted. Figure. Bulb should be surrounded from all sides by the substance of which the the temperature is to be measured. The bulb should not touch the surface of the container. Are there any variations in the readings? Discuss the possible reason. Let us try to answer this question. Activity 4.5 Figure Measuring temperature of water with a laboratory thermometer Note the reading, this is the temperature of water at that time. Compare the temperature of water recorded by each student in the class. Bojo, now understand why clinical thermometer cannot be used to measure high temperature, but still wonders whether a laboratory thermometer can be used to measure his body temperature. Activity 4.5, do this. Take some hot water in a beaker or a mug. Dip the thermometer in water. Wait till the mercury thread becomes steady and note the temperature. Now take out the thermometer from water. Observe carefully what happens now. Do you notice that as soon as you take the thermometer out of water, the level of mercury begins to fall. This means that the temperature must be read while the thermometer is in water. You may recall that while taking your own temperature, you have to take the thermometer out of your mouth to note the reading. Can you then use the laboratory thermometer to measure your Bojo wonders why the level of mercury should change at all when the bulb of the thermometer is brought in contact with another object. Body temperature Obviously, it is not convenient to use the laboratory thermometer for the purpose. For this purpose. Why does the mercury not fall or rise in a clinical thermometer when taken out of the mouth? Observe a clinical thermometer again. Do you see a kink near the bulb? Figure. What is the use of the kink? It prevents mercury level from falling on its own. Figure. A clinical thermometer has a kink in it. There is a lot of concern over the use of mercury in thermometers. Mercury is a toxic substance and is very difficult to dispose of if a thermometer breaks. These days, digital thermometers are available which do not use mercury. 4.4 Transfer of Heat You might have observed that a frying pan becomes hot when kept on a flame. It is because the heat passes from the flame to the utensil. When the pan is removed from the fire, it slowly cools down. Why does it cool down? The heat, the heat is transferred from the pan to the surroundings. So you can understand that in both cases, the heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. In fact, Pahili asks, does it mean that heat will not be transferred if the temperature of two objects is the same? In all cases, heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. How does heat flow? Let us investigate. Activity 4.6 Do this. Take a rod or flat strip of a metal, say of aluminium or iron. Fix a few small wax pieces on the rod. These pieces should be at nearly equal distances. Figure. Clamp the rod to a stand. If you do not find a stand, you can put one end of the rod in between bricks. Now hit the other ends of the rod and observe. 
What happens to the workspaces? Do these spaces begin to fall? Which piece falls the first? Do you think that it is figure? Blow up heat through a metal strip. Transport from the end nearest to the flame to the other end. The process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction. In solids, generally, the figure conduction of heat by different materials. Heat is transferred by the process of conduction. Do all substances conduct heat easily? You must have observed that the metallic pan for cooking has a plastic or wooden handle. Can you lift a hot pan by holding it from the handle without getting hurt? Activity 4.7 Do this. Heat water in a small pan or a beaker. Collect some articles such as a steel spoon, plastic scale, pencil and divider. Dip one end of each of these articles in what water? Figure. Wait for a few. Table. Article. Material with which the article is made up. Does the other end get hot? Yes or no? A steel spoon. Metal. Yes. Do this and comment this. Minutes. Touch the other ends. Enter your observation and table. The materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are conductors of heat, for example, aluminium, iron and copper. The materials which do not allow heat to pass through them easily are poor conductors of heat such as plastic and wood. Poor conductors are known as insulators. The water and air are poor conductors of heat. Then how does the heat transfer take place in these substances? Let us find out. Activity 4.8 Do this. Take a round bottom flask. If flask is not available, a beaker can be used. Fill it to third with water. Place it on a tripod or make some arrangement to place the flask in such a way that you can heat it by placing a candle below it. Wait till the water in the flask is still. Place a crystal of potassium permanganate at the bottom of the flask, gently using a straw. Now heat the water by placing the candle just below the crystal. Write your observation in your notebook and also draw a picture of what you observe. Figure. When water is heated, the water near the flame gets hot. Hot water rises up. The cold water from the sides moves down towards the source of heat. This water also gets hot and rises. Figure. Convection of heat in water. And water from the sides moves down. This process continues till the whole water gets heated. This mode of the heat transfer is known as convection. How does the heat travel in air? In which direction does the smoke go? The air near the heat sources gets hot and rises. The air from the sides comes in to take its place. In this way, the air gets heated. The flowing activity confirms this idea. Activity 4.9 Do this. Light a candle. Keep one hand above the flame and one hand on the side of the flame. Figure. Do your hands feel equally hot? If not, which hand feels hotter and why? Be careful. Keep your hands at a safe distance from the flame so that they do not get burnt. Figure. Transfer of heat by convection in air. Notice that towards the top the air gets heated by convection. Therefore, the hand above the flame feels hot. On the side, however, there is no convection and air does not feel at as hot as at the top. The people living in the coastal areas experience an interesting phenomenon during the day. The land gets heated faster than the water. The air over the land becomes hotter and rises up. The cooler air from the sea rushes in towards the land to take its place. The warm air from the land moves towards the sea to complete the cycle. Figure. The air from the sea is called the sea bridge. To receive the cooler sea bridge, 
the windows of the houses in coastal areas are made to face the sea. At night, it is exactly the reverse. The water cools down more slowly than the land. So the cool air from the land moves towards the sea. This is called the land bridge. When we come out in the sun, we feel warm. How does the heat from the sun reach us? It cannot reach us by conduction or convection as there is no medium such as air in most part of the space between the earth and the sun. Daytime, nighttime, cool, hot, hot, cool, sea bridge and land bridge. From the sun, the heat comes to us by another process known as radiation. The transfer of heat by radiation does not require any medium. It can take place whether a medium is present or not. When we sit in front of a room heater, we get heat by this process. A hot utensil kept away from the flame cools down as it transfers heat to the surroundings by radiation. Our body too gives heat to the surroundings and receives heat from it by radiation. All hot bodies radiate heat when this heat falls on some object. A part of it is reflected. A part is absorbed and a part may be transmitted. The temperature of the object increases due to the absorbed part of the heat. Why? Are you advised to use an umbrella when you go out in the sun? 4.5 kinds of clothes we wear in summer and winter. You know that in summer we prefer light colored clothes and in winter we usually wear dark colored clothes. Why is it so? Let us find out. Activity 4.10 Do this. Take two identical tin cans, paint the outer surface of one black and of the other white figure. Pour equal amounts of water in each and leave them in the midday sun for about an hour. Measure the temperature of water in both the cans. Do you find any difference in the temperatures? In We often use electricity and fuels like coal and wood to keep our houses cool or warm. Is it possible to construct buildings that are not affected much by heat and cold outside? This can be done by constructing outer walls of buildings so that they have trapped layers of air. One way of doing this is to use hollow bricks which are available these days. Figure containers with black and white surface. Which can is the water warmer? You can feel the difference even by touching water in the two cans. Activity 4.11 Do this. Fill the two cans used in activity 4.10 with the same amount of hot water at the same temperature say at 60 degrees C. Leave the cans in a room or in a set. Note the temperature of water after 10 to 15 minutes. Does the temperature of water in both the cans fall by the same amount? Do this activity suggest to you the reasons why it is more comfortable to wear white or light colored clothes in the summer and dark colored clothes in the winter? Dark surfaces absorb more heat and therefore we feel comfortable with dark colored clothes in the winter. Light colored clothes reflect most of the heat that falls on them and therefore we feel more comfortable wearing them in the summer. Woolen clothes keep us warm in winter. In the winter we use woolen clothes. Wool is a poor conductor of heat. Moreover, there is air trapped in between the wool fibers. This air prevents the flow of heat from our body to the cold surroundings. So, we feel warm. Suppose you are given the choice in winter of using either one thick blanket or two thin blankets joined together. What would you choose and why? Remember that there would be a layer of air in between the blankets. Q. 
keywords celsius scale conduction conductor convection insulator land bridge radiation sea bridge temperature thermometer what do you have learned our sense of touch is not always a reliable guide to the degree of hotness of an object temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness of an object thermometer is a device used for measuring temperature clinical thermometer is used to measure our body temperature <laughs> the range of the th of this thermometer is from 35 degree c or 42 degree c for other purposes we use the laboratory thermometers the range of these thermometers is usually from minus 10 degree c to 110 degree c the normal temperature of the human body is 37 degree c the heat flows from a body at a higher temperature to a body at a lower temperature there are three ways in which heat can flow from one object to another these are conduction convection and radiation in solids generally the heat is transferred by conduction in liquids and gases the heat is transferred by convection no medium is required for transfer of heat by radiation the materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are conductors of heat the materials which do not allow heat to pass through them easily are called insulators dark colored objects absorb more heat than the light colored objects that is the reason we feel more comfortable in light colored clothes in the summer woolen clothes keep us warm during winter it is so because wool is a poor conductor of heat and it has air trapped in between the fibers exercises do this and comment this figure extending learning activities and project do this and comment this figure did you know the celsius scale was devised by a swedish astronomer Anders Celsius in 1742 strangely he fixed the temperature of the boiling water as 0 degree C and of freezing water as 100 degree C however this order was reversed very soon <laughs>